Welcome, Lewis Kent, uh, TCR UK champion. Thank you very much for coming on the show and getting involved. But yeah, how are you? Um, I'm good, thank you. It's finally uh, settling in a little bit and I'm settling back down from the weekend. We had a bit of a stressful Monday at Donington. Um, didn't make it easy for myself one bit. Um, but yeah, we're finally back home, finally rested, finally settled down now. So yeah, I'm, I'm all good. I'm ready for the next adventure next year now, getting, a, getting all sponsorship ready for next year. Absolutely. Well, I've got so much to ask about the weekend at Donington. But before I do uh, ask about that, how did you first get in interested in, in motorsport? So I've actually got a family of four generations of racers. Um, so when the Americans first brought go-karts over to the UK, um, my great grandfather bought a car back in the 50s, started racing um, just for a bit of fun, nothing too special. Um, and then as soon as my granddad was 12, because back then the racing age was 12, there was no senior or junior class. It was all for one, everyone <laughs> race against everyone. So once he was 12, he he got a car and he started racing. Um, he had three daughters, which he wanted a boy to race, but didn't have one. So um, my mum was the eldest. Uh, and as soon as she got with my, my dad, um, my granddad sort of grabbed my dad and went, oh, perfect. I've got a guinea pig to go <laughs> racing. So grabbed hold of him um at 17 years old chucked him in a Renault 5 GT little Renault thing that he raced uh, and went from there to Formula First which is a bit similar to Formula Ford not a lot different same sort of power um did a couple of years in that which was I think it was something like 170 brake horsepower car single seater um and he went straight from that to V8 Euro cars which was 700 brake horsepower European NASCAR which yeah a little bit different but yeah he did it um and then yeah as soon as me and me and my brother Brad could pretty much walk um we were always into the racing um I can remember from my earliest memory was sitting in the passenger seat of my dad's V8 going down to the paddock at Brands at about three years old so we've always been in it um but yeah as I say four four generations of family spanning for 70 odd years now yeah absolutely and would you you know before you sort of got properly involved with it was it, you know, did you want to do that as a career? I suppose when you're younger, you're not entirely sure, but was it always something you wanted to be involved with? Yeah, I've, I've always <laughs> I've always had that feeling of wanting to be a professional racing driver. That's that's the aim. It still is the aim now. You know, I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm still in the lower ranks. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd love to in the future be able to be able to say my, my job and my profession is I race for a living. Um, I've got a little little way to go still so there's still some work to do but yeah it, I think it's everyone who's involved with motorsports dream to be able to say oh yeah my profession is motorsport I do this for a living I I either commentate I either report it I either race it any walk of motorsport if you're in it that's what you want to be doing for a living because it's it's such a great family atmosphere um but yeah ever since I was a young age I had had a different few things where when I was in my my lower teens i I went off and I said I wanted to become a farrier, which is like a blacksmith. Um, yeah. I started, did that. I did went to college, did that, and it just didn't work out. It just wasn't for me. So I come back. Um, I now just finished college doing um, in mechanical engineering. So done that on the backhand. If I don't succeed in racing, I want to do the coaching full time and become a coach. Um, so I'm going ahead with that and doing my full instructor's license. I've got my instructor's license, had it for a, a couple of years. I've been an instructor at Palm Sport Bedford for two or three years now. So if that all goes right, I want to go down that route. But if not, I've still got the mechanical engineering side that I can fall back on as well. Absolutely. Well, that, you know, that is the good thing with motorsport. I think when you say you're going to work in, in racing, the initial, you know, thought is driver, but there's all these other um you know ways you can go with you know the mechanic side of it and as you said the coach and then sort of the way I'm going the sort of the more media side is, is good that way but like like that in, in racing uh where you can compete there's lots of different you know types of cars and championships uh to compete in was there ever a particular aim did you say you know you're in touring cars now was that somewhere you wanted to go or did you want to you know stay in open wheels or anything like that yeah, once upon a time, I was, well, I say I was teammates. I was in the same team um, at the same time as Rob Huff was developing a go-kart called a Dino, yeah. which was 
2011, 2012, something like that. And at that point, I went and watched Rob at Brands Hatch in World Touring Cars when he was driving the Chevrolet Cruze. Yeah. Um, and from that point on, I think that was my aim to be a world touring car driver to be a i wanted to be a factory driver any any sort of form of factory driver that that's sort of the aim you know if it's gts touring cars that anything of that sort of sort of uh racing i've, I've never been a fan of of single seaters i've always liked saying yeah. that if i do pull alongside someone and i knock them i can drive off and be absolutely fine so yeah, I, I think I think the aim has always been world touring cars, and now it's WTCR. It's made it even more achievable, yeah. um, especially with the platforms that we've we've been involved with TCR UK, um, and with the TCR family, it's good because, as they say, you can take a car from the UK next year, take it to Europe, change the tires, and race it completely how it is. So yeah. it is achievable, um, and if, I think that's what mine and Brad's aims. Are for the future um, to try and make it all the way to the top. Absolutely. Would you? Were, were there any drivers? Would you say you know? As you, and even now, that have inspired you to get into touring car racing, especially. When I was younger, I, I used to watch British touring cars with my dad. Um, and you know, you had the, the classic Plato and Neil battle yeah. always happening. I can remember one of the earliest things I remember from touring cars is watching uh, Jason come to the last chicane at uh, Donington. And I can't remember who was in front of him. I think it might have even been James Thompson. Yeah. But just getting underneath the back of him, pushing him wide through the gravel and taking the win. It was yeah. like my, me and my dad sat there. My dad was like, see, that's what you have to do. He's a tactical driver. He does it. It's, it's hard, but it's, it's on the limit of fair. Yeah. So, you know, you've got the classical Neils, Platos, Gabriele Tarquini. I've, yeah. I've always loved his driving. I've worked with him as well, purely through Hyundai. Um, I think we had a test for a week over in Porto Mayo um, in Portugal, which I was very lucky to be able to take up um, and actually go there. Uh, I think there was actually only four cars on track, which was me and then the three works cars of Tarquini, um, Michelitz, uh, Farfus and Katzberg at the time. So yeah. they were the four, four drivers there and myself. So I've worked with Gabrielli. I've, I've, had driver training from him he's given me tips and i think he's one of those ones that i think everyone in touring cars has always looked up to because he's such a household name him and tom coronel you yeah. know both from great drivers and, and they've been in it so long they know every trick in the book you know they get out of the car and they look like they haven't done any work they've just been <laughs> had a little leisure leisurely drive but see some of these young boys get out and they're sweating but yeah, yeah. I think people like that are, are always the trademark names of who I've looked up to and, and I've, I've wanted to aspire to be. Same with even when I've, I've been watching my dad, you know, I've, I've learned a lot of things from my dad and just watching him through the years. He's He himself was a great driver and he went through the ranks and, and got up to quite a high level racing. He was um, he was Barry Lee's teammate at one point. So yeah. he, he didn't do too bad for himself. Um, but yeah, he's, it's the general people like Tar Queenie, Neil, Plato, Coronel, Muller, yeah. Menu, all, all the old school touring car boys. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what's good about you know touring cars, whether it's British or, or European or, or any of those other championships. But racing's brilliant, as you know, we've discussed, and you know, everyone's really close to each other, but it's the people and um and you know the, the situations they were in and the dramas were there you know any races that stick out to you um from the past obviously you mentioned donnington a, a little while ago yeah i, I remember donnington back, back in that must have been 2009 2010 that was yeah. that was when the super tour started to fade out so that was that sort of era um a couple of other ones i can remember watching the world touring cars at brands hatch as rob huff's guest and um, that was the same weekend as the CI Leon um, roll, the classic roll that rolled yeah. over the fence yeah. and nearly took out the Marshall Post. So that was on that weekend, you know. Um, and yeah, just I can remember going and watch club racing from a young age and, and just enjoying it. I've been to multiple F1 races before or, or tests as well. So I've always been around the paddock and always been in it and always been interested in it. But ever since a young age, ever since karting, everyone was like, oh yeah, I want to make it to F1. And I yeah. stood there and I went, that's not achievable. You need lots of money. You need to be very, very talented. Scrap that idea. And from day one, it was, I want to be a touring car driver. So mm. ever since then, from about 2013, 2014, I followed British touring cars religiously. <laughs> um, and yeah, just, just from that point on, 
just followed it all the way through. Absolutely. Well, you're in TCR UK now. Uh, when did you actually enter uh, the TCR UK Championship for the first time? So that was 2018, first 18. year that the championship was launched. Yeah. Um, we 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 are the only well, me and Darrell Wilson are the only two original drivers from yeah. the first year. Um, so yeah, it was 2018 was the first year, and we've been going ever since. Absolutely. And when when did you actually first? What what brought you to enter um, it in the first place? Because obviously, I suppose there's there's a little bit of a risk really entering a, a brand new championship for that season. Yeah, well, we we had a look at it budget wise. So, the budget to buy a car brand new um, with factory backing and a lot of help with data setup and all the rest of it, as well as the parts that come with it and the setup, was a lot more affordable than British touring cars. We were also oh, having yeah. a look at British touring cars with multiple mm-hmm. teams like Team uh, Team Dynamics. I've had a look at uh, for last year, which was a bit on the higher scale, but. There's a reason for it. They have their multiple champions. They oh, are yeah. very good at what they do. Yeah, so certainly. I've also had chats with Team Hard, Sicily, um, Trade Price Cars, teams like that I had chats with. And the price range for touring cars was triple or quadruple the amount of what TCR was. Um, and we, we had a look at TCR. Of, at the end of the season, we've got something back. We still own the car. So we've always got something that if we if we did run out of money for some strange reason, we could always sell the car and we could always yeah. get it back. Where touring cars, you're playing with a lot of money to have nothing at the end. You get to the end of the season, it's like brilliant. Let's find a whole load more money to go racing again in someone else's car. Yeah. Um, it was a risk, but after the first year, we thought, well, good year. We loved it. Thought it was going to go a long way. Second year sort of fell a little bit. I think it got put down by a couple of other series, which was a shame because it's a great format for the price it is. It is top quality touring cars for a fraction of the price of what it should be. Um, but yeah, we, we, we looked at it as if we buy a UK car, we can go to Europe, we can go to different championships and, and just do whatever we wanted to without being tied into anything really. It's good, isn't it? And I think it is interesting that um, you know, with British touring cars, how expensive it is. Now, would you say um, British touring cars? It's still possible to enter as you know, as a proper independent team with your own car. Because if you think about it, it's not as common anymore. And you know, all the teams are big, established teams these days. Yeah, well, we we've looked at it. You know, I I know Bert Taylor quite well, um, who ran NT or BTC now, which was Norlin at the start when Norlin yeah. first arrived on the scene and you know we spoke to him and, and the money that he was talking to start a team at the start of it is it's very it's, it's higher end money you know when when you look at tcr it's you can run it on say when you're starting up two car team 200 grand for the year yeah. which is a lot of money don't get me wrong but for touring cars it's nothing for touring cars that is a very very good price you know when you look at british touring cars just to run in someone like team hard or trade by cars you're looking from the 300 to 400 grand range and you have to be a proven driver as well and yeah. that won't guarantee that you're going to you're going to be at the front that's just to get you on the grid if you want to be in one of these top boy teams say west surrey racing or team dynamics you're looking more like seven eight hundred grand a year yeah and that's before damage and we know what the damage oh the damage yeah is like <laughs> with touring cars so it, it's doable if you've got a good backing you've got a sponsor that wants to chuck money into it as an independent team, yeah, yeah, you can still do it. You just have to look at trade price cars and accelerating people like that who have, who have done it. But they've obviously built their way up to that stage through racing already. You know, trade price cars sponsored Team Hard for God knows how many years. <laughs> you had Accelerate, who had the mini team. And you look at these teams who have come into it and they've got a background already. So it's doable, but it will take a lot of money and a lot of time and effort to get there as well. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to have to ask TCR UK. This season was a good one for you, um, unsurprisingly. But how how would you sum up your year? Yeah, it's it's had its ups and downs. You know, <laughs> I think I had five or six rounds this year where I haven't been on the podium out of fourteen. So yeah. for that that side of it, it's been brilliant. You know, we've had the pace all year. The last two rounds, I think there's may have been a small issue with the car on the setup wise or not even the setup on the suspension wise. I think they might have lost a little bit of gas in the struts. So the car at the last two rounds didn't perform as it should do. 
Um, and as we know, it can do. You know, we usually we're we're right at the front. And we're right on the uh, on the money, as Brad's shown all year. Um, yeah. But yeah, overall, as I've said from the start, consistency is key, and that's what wins championships. So that's all I've tried to do is stay out of trouble um, and be there or thereabouts. And as I've shown, uh, it it helps when you're consistent, and and that's what wins. Absolutely. Well, you know, final round of a championship, Donington, proper, you know, brilliant circuit. Talk us through your weekend. Yeah, it, it went a bit pear-shaped at Donington, <laughs> to be honest. Um, qualifying didn't go too well. The start of qualifying, we went out. Um, we had the setup with the tyres wrong, so we had brand new tyres in the front, the rears and the back, uh, which usually works because you want the rear to be quite loose and just to drag you through. Only problem with that was we were going out there and we didn't have enough back end grip. So it was just sliding all over the place, um, which meant I, when I was catching it, I was driving off the track trying to save it, <laughs> Yeah. which meant I got all my lap times disqualified. So I had, I think my two fastest times were 14 and 19 seconds off the pace. Really? Um, so that was my lap times. If I, if I didn't have any disqualified, I'd be in mid pack. Yeah. But because of the track limits, I had to have them disqualified. Um, but we went back out. We changed the car halfway through qualifying, went back out. And as I went back out, I thought, yep, that's cool. Cars will fine now. I'll be able to do a good lap, hopefully get up high enough in the, uh, in the grid to, to make myself, give himself a good chance for the championship. Um, and as I was on my flying lap, a red flag come out. So yeah. kind of ruined my chances from the start. Um, but yeah, first race started 16th, right at the back, dead last. Um, drove my way through to seventh, which put myself into a good position. I was only one place off Dan Kirby, who was second in the championship at the time, and Brad jumped himself into second. Um, went into the second race, finished fifth again. I had another race where I started seventh, chucked it off on the start, which was stupid of me again. Um, went all the way back to the back and had to drive through to fifth. So yeah. that was another, again, another decent finish, um, which joint my worst finish of the year before Donington. Um, and then again, in the last race, I had to start 16th again for my second fastest time, which was 19 seconds off the pace in qualifying. So we had to drive through again, which was quite a challenge. You know, we had, but I, I was trying my hardest um, just to make places up. And I, I could feel the car wasn't right because I, I just couldn't keep up. Yeah. Um, and I was very fortunate that the boys at the front had a coming together, which unfortunately involved Brad which yeah. Brad didn't Brad didn't unfortunately he didn't deserve what he he got um he should have finished the, the race up at the front he, he could have even overtaken me and beaten me in the championship if he if he had kept on going but yeah as soon as I saw those boys all go off I thought right okay that's it I've, I've secured it I've, I've done it so it was just a case of make sure the car was all right pick off the odd place here and there as they come to me and, and just finish the race mm. It sounds, you know, it sounded, obviously it was quite a difficult day, um, obviously very rewarding at the end, but how, how do you keep, you know, calm through the races, especially on, you know, a weekend that's so important? Yeah, you know, I'm, I deal with pressure quite well. Um, I've never got nervous. I've been doing it long enough now to know that if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. There's not a lot you can do about it. You, you've got to just take it as with a pinch of salt and go, oh, well, that happened maybe next time. So, you know, at the start of the weekend from qualifying, I thought, oh, maybe this might be the weekend that I get beaten. Maybe someone else will be champion. I, I, I didn't know. But, yeah, from the start, I, I just sat there and thought, well, what will be, will be. So, you know, you've got to try and just be confident as you can, uh, well, as confident as you can and just go into it with, with a look of if I do get beat, I do get beat. So, Absolutely, and obviously Donington Park. Is it you know? Do you enjoy uh, do you enjoy driving the circuit? Because uh, I think it's one of my personal favourites. Yeah, you know, I, I absolutely love it. It's a it's a great track. I've had good success around there before. Um, you know, last year I had two wins around there. I had pole around there, and I've I've also got the lap record around there. So for me, Donington Park is a, a strong circuit for me, and I really do like it. You know, I don't like to put favourite circuits in my mind because I've always said if you have a favourite circuit you go to a circuit and go oh well this isn't my favourite I don't like it and you'll go yeah. slower so I've always said all, all the circuits are my favourite I've always liked I've had favourite circuits over in the past but not anymore I like all the circuits um, and yeah I go I go into each circuit with, with a different opinion sometimes so I don't know places like Anglesey still weirds me out a bit just because it's a bit narrow yeah. Um, but yeah 
I've always had good uh, good results around uh, Donington. So I did go into the, the weekend confident that, that we were going to be able to compete well. Um, and yeah, just, just happy with, with the track selection for the last round, really. Absolutely. Well, I won't keep you for too much longer. Um, I was just going to say, it's probably a bit early to be talking about next season. But, you know, this championship win but must, you know, give you so much confidence going into whatever you're up to next year. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're planning on what we're doing next year. We're planning on what car we're going to be using and what we're going to be doing. So, you know, it, it, it all depends again on budget. We're putting a good sponsorship book, uh, booklet together now. Um, we're going to go out sponsor hunting very, very soon. So hopefully we can bring in the money um, to be able to take us a bit, bit further. We'd love to do a full year of Europe, but if not, we'd still love to come back to do the UK again, you know. Yeah. Um, I think a triple crown would sound very good. So oh, yeah, certainly. We'd, we'd love to try that. Or even if Brad Brad won it next year, you know, it's, it's again, as long as we're racing, we've always said as long as we're racing, we're happy. It doesn't matter where we are or what we're doing. Um, but yeah, I think the UK Championship's picked up a lot now. Um, Stuart and Nicky Lines have done a great job for Maximum to, to boost the profile of it, um, you know, and, and having the back of good year as well is is really good you know we're, we're getting up to the the right amount of number on the grid to be a good big championship now um so yeah if, if we do come back to uk next year we won't be disheartened we won't be upset we'll we'll take on it we'll we'll take it on again and we know that there's big championships and good drivers in it so it it'll be a challenge wherever we go absolutely well as i said thank you very much for coming on the show and having a chat it's been absolutely brilliant you've been brilliant and of course, you know, congratulations on the on the championship win. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, all the best for whatever you're up to next. Cheers. Thank you.